Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to your third Git and GitHub tutorial and in this video I just want to take a few moments to discuss how Git works. Okay then, so before we start using Git whatsoever, I want to take a few minutes just to explain the very basics of the Git mechanics and how it all works. So at the heart of Git are these things called repositories, but because I'm hipster, you might hear me refer to these as repos from now on. So these are repos, they are containers for projects that you want to track with Git. For example, you could have a repo which is a website project, okay, and it's going to track that website project for you. And by the way, a repository or repo can either be local, stored on your computer, or remote, which is stored on some kind of online service like GitHub. Don't worry about remotes for now, we'll cover those later on. For now, let's focus on local repositories. So anyway, we can have as many of these different repos on our computer as we want for as many different projects. And all of these different repos and projects are going to be tracked independently of each other by Git. Okay, so essentially a Git repo or repository is essentially a project folder which Git is going to track the contents of for us. For example, we might have some kind of folder on our computer called my project or whatever the hell your project is called and inside a surefire sign that this folder is a repository and being tracked by Git is this .git file, okay? That says that this is a repository right here. And because this is at the root level of this project, it means that Git is gonna track changes to any file in this folder, even files in subfolders, okay? If this .git file was not in the root, but instead in this image folder, it would only track changes to this image folder and this would be the repository not this but because it's at the root the whole thing is the repository and it's going to track changes to every single file so if we make changes to the index the style or any of the images git is going to recognize that and track them for us pretty cool so there's these things called commits and commits are a bit like save points if you were playing some kind of video game and you come to a save point, you can create some kind of save file, right? And you can create many different save files and then return to whichever different save file that you want at any given time. Commits are a little bit like that in the most simplistic form. So we have these different commits right here, okay? So for example, we're starting a project and say we start to create some of the HTML and at one point we finish the header and we say, okay, this is a logical point to kind of create a commit, a save point if we like. So what we do is we commit the state of our code and our files at that one particular time to the commit history. We create this kind of save point, this commit, okay? Further down the line, we might start on something else and finish the footer. And we say, okay, this is another logical kind of save point. I wanna track the progress up to here as well. We'll make a commit here. So we name that commit finished footer. And further down the line, we do some more code. We added a JavaScript slider and we add a commit there. So these are all different commits in the commit history within our repository, okay? So the cool thing is, say we make about five different commits, right? And then at commit five over here, we kind of say, actually, you know what? I want to rewind and go back to the fourth commit or the third commit or the second commit. I want to go back to one of these save points and see what the code is like there instead. You can do that using Git because we've made these different commits. We can roll back the code to any different commit in the commit history, which is really cool. So it's tracking our different revisions of the code as we go along and as we commit. So with Git working in this fashion, it's going to be incredibly hard for us to ever actually lose our progress and our work because we can just roll back, fast forward, etc. So before we make a repository, I just want to talk about these different three stages, okay? So we've got our project folder over here and we make some changes to say the index file, right? Then those changes are going to go into the modified stage right here, okay? They're modified, but they're not ready for committing. We don't know whether we want to commit these files and create like this save point, if you like, with these changes. But if we decide we do, what we can do is we can add this file into the staging area. And what that says to Git is, look, when I make a commit, the changes that I make to this index file, I want that to be included in the commit. So say, for example, we change both of these files 
we are in the modified stage, then we say, okay, we want to stage these. We want to add them to the staging area, okay? So both of those files are in the staging area so that when we create a commit, those files, those changes are gonna be committed and a snapshot of those files is gonna be added into the commit history, okay? And the same goes as we make more commits as we go along. So this is how Git works in repositories and by making commits, okay? And by the way, this kind of stick here that the commits are on, this is what we call a branch. And when we begin a repository, in the most basic form, we have one branch, which is the master branch, which is this kind of thing here. But in future, we're gonna talk about having additional branches, which kind of branch off from the master and then merge back in at later times. And that's really cool because it means we can work on new features without ever altering the master branch code. Make sense? But don't worry about that too much for now. Like I said, we're gonna cover all of this later on. So anyway, that's the basics of how Git works. So in the next tutorial, we're now ready to go ahead and create our very first repository.